Hi, I'm Danny and this is Seb and we're from Pazload UK. And today we're going to be taking you through the cleaning process of the second fix Pazlo trim tools. We're going to be looking at the 65, the iron 50 and the iron 45. It's worth pointing out that the cleaning process is exactly the same on all of these tools, with a couple of exceptions which we'll talk through later. Okay, so the tool that I'm going to concentrate on is our iron 65 angled tool. Firstly, we must always make sure that the tool is safe by removing the battery, by removing its gas cell, and also by removing any remaining brads that's left in the tool. I'm going to be using the Allen key, the 964 that comes provided within the tool itself. What we want to do firstly is remove the filter cover. You'll also see that I'm using a bin here to keep the parts in. I don't want any lost parts or things falling on the floor. There's your filter. Check the filter for any holes or any tears. If it's dirty, give the filter a spray and leave to dry. All the equipment and cleaning equipment Danny's using today is available in our cleaning kits, which is available from any Paslo distributor. Within the kit, you're going to find an intensive Paslo cleaning uh, spray, also a lubricant, and a lint free cloth, which allow you to clean the tools sufficiently. That's what I'm doing here. I'm removing the um, shoulder screws. Avoid using any power tools at this stage. Alan, keep providing the kit, we'll do the job perfectly. Okay, so I'm removing the sh um, shoulder screws and keeping them carefully in the box so we don't lose them. So just finally remove little side screws. They're grub screw size, so they're very small, so be careful when you're handling them. It's important to clean your tool. So generally between five and 10,000 fixings, you should be looking to service the tool, depending on the environment you're working in. Okay, so I'm removing the cap, the tool. And we see the seal in the head of the tool. Two wires we want to be removing. There's the spark unit wire and the fan wire. Keep it in the side. Turn the cylinder away from the wires and carefully remove the cylinder from the tool itself. I'm going to concentrate on the cylinder area first with the cleaning process. So what Stanley's doing here is cleaning any debris or any grease that might have built up from using the tool over a period of time. Do pay particular attention to the spark plug area, making sure it's clean and clear. Once I sprayed that, the power of the spray will blow away any dust or dirt on the, on the uh, cylinder head itself. Then get your oil. Place the oil around the metal clips by using your finger gently work it into the clips. It's also worth noting that the clips have a gap in them each clip so make sure they're not together make sure they're about 180 degrees apart. And the, Our premium tools rely on a vacuum system so if the, the gaps were aligned it could compromise the vacuum inside the tool. Once you've done the cylinder head we need to get into the the chamber area. So as you can see at the moment, you can see the top of the piston. So by using my Allen key, and you're pushing the piston down its full stroke of the tool, so into the chamber area. Might be worth pointing out at this point, Danny, that Danny's holding the tool in this angle to prevent any of the, the spray dripping down through the nose piece of the tool and just generally causing a mess. Okay, so once you've sprayed in the tool, get your cloth and give it a wipe inside the chamber area to remove any excess dirt that you have. Once you've done that, I'm going to drop some oil inside the chamber area. Then I'm going to open the front cover. And using the Allen key, I'm going to push the dry pin, your piston, up and down so that it really works the oil into the chamber area of the tool. Remember guys, this is the same process for the remainder of these tools, apart from a couple of exceptions. Okay, so find a bit of oil onto the tool, place the part of the oil onto the combustion chamber ring, top of the tool, gently work it around. The oil Danny's applying is naturally found within our fuel cells. Every time we operate the gun, it will be applying the oil to the tool itself. Finally, when you put the tool back together, make sure the dry piston is returned up to starting recovery position. If we were to forget this stage, the tool will reset itself via the natural vacuum process the tool operates with. So now we're ready to put the tool back together. So, sit in the head. 
back into the tool. Be very careful with regards to the fan and be careful of these cables. What you'll notice on the cylinder head itself, there's a part cut out, there's a part cut out on the tool to make room for the cables. In part of that recess, there is a uh, preferred sequence of all to put the cables back in. So you want to be looking to apply the fan cable first, as Danny's doing, followed by the spark unit cable. Make sure they're nicely tucked away in there. If you put the top cap on, they're not in the correct position. The, the cables may pinch. Okay, once you've done that, replacing the cap on the tool and we're replacing our shoulder screws. The only difference between the tools we have on display today would be the IM50. It's not necessary to move the side screws on the side of the, the fuel cell cap. But also, just to remind you guys not to use any power tools or electric tools when putting the screws back in because you don't want to over tighten the tool. The Allen key provided in the kit would do the job fine. Then replace the fuel cover. What Danny's doing now is just replacing the filter and the filter cover. It's an easy process, just a, a little clipping system, no tools required. Your safety is also important, so while doing these the cleaning procedures, you should always wear your gloves and always wear the, the glasses provided in the puzzle kits. What I'm doing here is just returning the gas cell and the battery, placing your brads and your tool is ready to go. Now you've successfully seen us clean the, the 65 tool, we're now going to point out one difference on the iron 45 which makes it slightly different. One important thing to remember here is the piston feed assembly chamber here needs to be oiled. At the back of the chamber you'll see an open hole. Using your hazard oil, simply drop a few drops of oil into that piston feed assembly and the tool is ready to go. Now we've cleaned the tools, we're going to test fire the nailer and see how it performs. Okay. Start off with the IM65, inserting the battery, lights on, tools ready to use. Working perfectly. Don't forget, you can adjust the depth on the brad nailer by simply winding down or winding up. Your depth adjust it on the tool. Give you the perfect depth you need. And thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe and leave some comments below.